Here I'd like to take a discrete random variable and illustrate the calculation of its variance and show you both the population variance and the sample variance. In order to illustrate the variance of a discrete random variable, I created a simple one given by x here with five possible outcomes. And then f of x is the probability of each outcome, so that if x is a genuine discrete random variable, the sum here needs to be 100%. And if x is discrete, as it is here, as opposed to continuous, then we can call this function a probability mass function, PMF. Now, f, x times f of x leads to the average or mean, and the mean is just the weighted average of the possible values of x. So we have 1 multiplied by 10% is 0 0.1, 2 multiplied by 20% is 0 0.4, and the sum of those is the weighted average of possible values of x, and that is called the average or the mean. Or if you want to be fancy, you could also call this the first moment or even the location. But we need this mean of 3.1 in this case to compute the variance, and the variance I've colored in orange. The variance is the expected value of the squared difference between each possible value and the mean, given notationally here. So what that means, the, for, if we take the first row, for example, we have x is 1 minus the mean of 3.1, and we take that difference squared, and you can see it's 4.4. And then in the second case, the outcome of 2 minus the mean of 3.1, the same mean, squared, equals 1.2. So these are the squared differences. Then they can be multiplied by the probabilities. So we have 10% multiplied by 4.4 equals 0 0.44. Here we have 20% multiplied by the 1.2, itself a squared difference of, and that equals 0 0.24. So that the sum of these, in this case, is 1.39, which is then our expected value of a squared difference between each individual value and the mean, and that's the variance. So this is a measure of dispersion, but its units are units squared, so typically not intuitive to us. And we would take the square root, of course, to translate the variance as a measure of dispersion into the standard deviation, which has the same units of x, and is also the measure of dispersion, but is more useful to us. So this formula for the variance mathematically translates into what I think is its more useful counterpart that I've shown here. And that is the variance is the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. So in practice, I'll tell you for exams, this is the one we tend to use. And mathematically, it needs to be the same. So in this case, we have a column for x squared. Here, x is 1, 1 squared is 1, x of 2, 2 squared is 4, x of 3, 3 squared is 9. So here's the values of x squared. Here, we've just multiplied them by the probabilities, and I'll take that out, just one decimal here. So we have 10% times x squared is 0.1, 20% times x squared is 0.8. So that the sum of this column, in this case, is 11. And so you'll see this is 11 in this case is the expected value not of x, but of the variable x squared. And so that means we can get the, if we get this, we have the variance very easily. And the variance is the expected value of x squared, which is here 11, minus the expected value of x, which after all is uh, the mean of 3.1 squared. This difference in this case is 1.39 and necessarily equals the same variance that we got here the longer way. So that's the variance. And what I also did here is to compare this population to a sample. 
So in order to generate a sample, I wanted a, a simulation where I have 100 random draws from this probability distribution. So I've hidden rows 4 through 97, but you can imagine a simulation. And here I've uh, asked Excel for a random number, random number generator between 0 and 1. So that's a random uh, uniform continuous variable. And then the inverse transform method just allows us to take that random variable and draw from the probability distribution. So in this column here, what I really just have for a random X is 100 random draws from the same probability distribution. So that if I hit uh, recalculate or F2 each time, I'll get a different uh, simulation of 100 random draws and a histogram to characterize it so that we would um, expect this average to be somewhere near the true average of 3.1, but we also do not expect it to match because there's sampling variation. So down here with my sample, you can see I, here I have the square differences. Here for the first simulation, x is 3, 3 minus the mean of 3.28, and then the quantity squared. So here I have the series of squared differences such that if I take the sum and divide by the sum by 100, I get the average of the series of squared differences, which in this case is 1.26, and that's a variance. So but it's a variance with sampling variation. So we expect it to come in somewhere near the 1.39, but we also do not expect it to match. Now dividing by 100 we does give us an estimate of this true variance, but it's only one kind of estimate. And just technically it's called, it's the uh, MLE or maximum likelihood estimate of 1.262. However, what we did here is we took a sample and realistically in most cases we're going to be take a sample we're going to take a sample so what happens is we lose a so-called degree of freedom in computing the average and in most cases it's more appropriate to take the sample variance and the only difference here is that instead of the average we take what i call the almost average we take the sum of 126.2, instead of dividing by 100, we divide by n minus 1, or in this case, 99. And you can see that's necessarily going to be slightly higher. So that formula for the sample variance is given here. Still, it's the sum of square differences, but instead of dividing by 100, we divide by 99 little bit higher, a little bit more conservative, adjusts for the degree of freedom, um, and gives us the true sample variance such that if we take its square root, we get the uh, sample standard deviation, in this case 1.129. So that's just to distinguish between here a sample and what up here using the expectation not notation is a true uh, calculation of an expected population variance. So I hope that's helpful.